how functional or dysfunctional is, is the United Nations and, and what can we do to, to make that an institution, again, that, that, that will do its job? Well, if you're going to talk United Nations, we could talk until next week. But, but I do think if we think about institutions in general, um, I think those who, who are populating most of the institutions of powers, there is a sense of complacency. And I do think there needs to be a rethinking about how we can make sure that some of these institutions serve people best. For example, the European Union was a creation to, to help to avoid war. And it was an, I see it as, an, as an, an, an entity that was exporting values. Nowadays, it seems as if the EU is more like, um, it's seen at least by people as, as something where it is trying to avoid the import of, of either refugees or, or, or chaos. And, and I think what we need to do is reinvent the European Union as, as a place where, where basically that can protect its citizens from, from the disadvantages of, of globalization, because there are lots of advantages, but also disadvantages. We need to, to show that the European Union, for example, yes, you can have this para-sovereign organization, but that can still mean that you can also have, have nation, nation states that, that play a role. And so it's, I think it requires a, a rethink of how some of these institutions work and that each of them, I mean, the UN needs to re, be rethought, but even national institutions need to be rethought. I mean, some of the countries, you know, I, if I look at the United Kingdom, um, what's happening there is that this, the social welfare system has was established in the 50s has not been rethought since then. So it's not benefiting those who need it most. It needs a complete rethink. But it can be done. It's clear that politics have consequences. We've just seen this in the last few days. And the need to reach across all lines and build bridges is more urgent than ever before. In this recent American election, um, uh, Donald Trump did not get more votes than uh, Mitt Romney four years ago. He got about 60 million votes. Hillary Clinton, at the end of the day, will have more popular votes than Donald Trump by about two million. But she will be about six million short of what Barack Obama got in 2012. So there's a missing participation on the part of people who should understand, especially, that their futures are at stake. Many of those who were missing were the millennials, the younger generation. Um, some of them may have uh, uh, been responding to various stereotypes and felt themselves disillusioned. Or they felt that they didn't need to participate. They had something else to do. Um, that's what happened in Brexit. They were, the younger generation was uh, largely for Remain, and they didn't show up, and so Brexit narrowly won. So it's, the burden really falls on the next generation to understand that its participation for its own future is absolutely essential, and that uh, politics is uh, not something foreign to them, not something alien, but is very much about themselves, and that it's up to them to shape it and make it in their own image. To go back to the United Nations and the EU and the World Bank and the IMF, I happen to be in these corridors for the last 30, 35 years of my life. Of course, again, I have to say, they have been doing, trying, some, and they have some good brains. But honestly speaking, it became a dumping place for many old ministers or wives of old ministers and f first ladies or prime ministers, at least from our region, from our region. Can you believe it or not that UNDP, when Gaddafi was hanging the Libyan in the, in the streets of Libya, UNDP chose his daughter to be the ambassador of peace. So that tells you how the hypocrisy is in this United Nation. And the first ladies and the wife of the prime minister, at least in our regions, are the one who are getting most of their funding and most of their support. So I think really the time has come, and for you, People that at least you are, you know, you, you, are, you are fortunate, to be honest with you, very fortunate. You have, 
you are paying your taxes for this institution. So we are helpless. So it is your voices that you need to push your representative in these organizations to really clean it. It needs so much cleaning, so much cleansing. And I think it's becoming very bureaucratic, very unfair, and very politicized, and again, controlled by the superpowers. This is it. Europe, after World War I, after the, after the moral collapse of Europe, um, we exported our ideal of uh, to have a political moral power to America. World War I, World War II, and everything that happened that. Now we are in a situation in which I still don't have any clue what kind of political power can guide us out of this mess. Steve, do you have, based on reason or technology, <laughs> an insight on this? Well, certainly we should not underestimate the good that institutions can, can do. Right. And they, they will not save the world but they can improve the world. And the United Nations, which is a horribly flawed and corrupt and often ridiculous organization, but it actually has done some good. The mere fact that it established the international norm that states may not be conquered, that they may not go out of existence. So Poland, for example, has continued to exist since 1945. In many periods of history, it was just carved up. Uh, no member of the United Nations has gone out of existence through conquest. And as I documented it in the book, rates of death in warfare, although they are still horrifying, are far lower than, than they used to be, lower than they were during the Vietnam War, during the Korean War, to say nothing of the two world wars. So we mustn't, with all of the world's problems, we must remember, uh, never say it can't get any worse, it can get worse, it was worse. Uh, so, but if I understand you correctly, you quite bluntly state that we should not expect too much now from the world of politics in terms of a guidance, how to maneuver through the potential I think, conflict? Uh, well, I think what's clear is that there's an emergence of an authoritarian model, including in the United States, that extends as well to Europe and uh, all the way to Turkey, and that uh, that's a challenge uh, to democracy. I think that uh, there's a new challenge in the West and to uh, uh, not only Western coherence and uh, 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 the West as an alliance uh, on every level, but also to uh, Western ideas and ideals and to the very concept of the Enlightenment. Democracy was, was you know, for a long time, uh, uh, you know, the code word for a better world. Not necessarily saving the world, but at least for a better world. Um, democracy, what's the status of democracy in your region of the world, democracy. Uh, what's going on with the democracy in the in Europe? What's going on with democracy in America? It's not a very uh, a nice picture. So, how to restore democracy now? What's going on with education, and how can we how can we get that kind of education we are in need of? Farida, you. Farida. No, listen and, and yes, yes. Again, democracy is a package of many ingredients. Mm -hmm. So democracy, uh, prerequisite for democracy is, you know, good leadership, capable leadership. No uh, education. When, 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 when Rob told me that I'm coming to this conference, I've been talking, asking many people. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, Amsterdam to talk about how we can make a better world. So how we can make a better world? Many people tell me, well, you're losing your time. Stay home. It's so cold. <laughs> and don't go because it's a joke. But I think the majority, the majority were talking about education. Many were talking about freedom. Many, many, many were talking about replacing these leaders. How we are going to have anything since we are having the, 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 the actual, the, the, they are not elected, they are thieves, they are dictators, they are ignorant, many of them, they are, so we are helpless. That's what we have been, like I, I talked earlier, but definitely democracy, democracy. Of course, we, uh, all of us will be fighting for it. And they think now, we are planting the seeds. We will die and we will not live all these dreams, to be honest. I'm sure I'm not going to live my dreams, but never mind. My granddaughters and my grandchildren will live it. So now there is a very vibrant movement 
in all the Arab region by women, particularly young women and young men. It's unbelievable what's going on. Education is not only education of the intelligence, it's not only knowledge, as is intended by many liberalism, but it's education also of the, of the will in relation to the good, it's education of ethic, it's education of values. Because in the contrary, you have, in many universities, they say, I know, some, someone say that Obama go to his original university and they, you are the leaders, you need to have the power, but don't explain what is the meaning of the power. This is the question. If we don't have education of moral, ethics, Aristotle, uh, uh, learn about justice in the politics and about freedom and, and about friendship in the politics. This we need to have an education of moral because the human being is good not because have a great intellect but because have the will to go to the, to the good. This is a very important question today. Now, if, if if I might speak to that wise notion of the spiritual and moral value of democracy, um, um, that is central to the very idea of democracy, which is a, a political ideal, it's a constitutional ideal, but it's also a moral ideal. Uh, and as, if I can cite Lincoln, um, uh, as I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. That is a moral idea as well. It's a spiritual idea. And it is an ideal of democracy. We face a crisis of democracy within the United States in which democracy is used against democracy, in which law is used against the rule of law, in which justice is used against justice. A seeming paradox in which a plutocrat is uh, uh, depicted as a messianic leader of the masses, uh, 